I am joined by Dr. Ben Zychik, the Morton K. Blaustein Chair and Professor at John Hopkins University and AGU's newly elected President-elect. A leading voice in, sci in climate science, Dr. Zychik combines his expertise in earth and space sciences with a commitment to advancing ethical, impactful solutions for a sustainable future. Dr. Zychik, thank you so much for coming on. Thanks for having me. Where do you see the most exciting developments happening in solution science? So first off, I just want to uh, point out the amazing dividends that solution science has paid. And that's both directions. It's science contributing to solutions and it's solutions contributing to science. Right? Our discovery science benefits from the fact that we're engaged in solution science because it points to new questions. Mm -hmm. To point to just a couple of specific things that I think have really taken wing in the past decade. Uh, first of all, this really deep commitment to co-generation. This idea that not everyone might define themselves as, as a scientist, but everyone's engaged in science. And if we're going to make actionable solution science, that means really putting in the tremendous time and energy, but also just the transcendent experience of working beyond our community, whether that's with local communities, uh, with their environmental challenges, or whether it's with corporations and with, with larger governments. All of this needs to come together in solution science, and we all benefit from it. And the second thing I'd like to point to is just the maturity of the pipeline of solution science. You have to understand systems. You need to apply that understanding. You need to embody that understanding and embed it within larger decision frameworks. Um, and all of that gets oriented towards the identified problems and opportunities of our partners across society. And again, it works both ways. And so you have a situation where the maturity of the science helps to drive that, and also the maturity of our ability to discuss the science with the people who identify and define the solution space and so feeding all the way back to improve science. So taken together, I think that solution science has been just a tremendously important initiative within our community. AGU 2024's theme this year is what's next for science. So what's your next for science? What at this meeting are you most looking forward to? So there's so many exciting nexts for sciences, right? And, like, and right now, science is always moving in exciting new directions. Uh, right now, there's certainly, uh, for me, and I think a lot of us, a sense that this change is happening remarkably fast. And I think that's not just our perception. I think the, the pace of innovation, certainly you talk about things like AI, you talk about improved sensing technology, you talk about all of the, um, some of those, uh, those components that underlie the science you're trying to answer, those are moving fast and, and again, it cr can create some anxiety. It's also just wildly exciting what's happening right now. And so as we look to all of those possible nexts, I think that my, my mind immediately turns to service, right? How can we as a science community uh, harness, leverage, advance some of these technologies, position the core discovery science and solution science questions in a context where you're using these to benefit science, to benefit understanding, uh, and really to benefit society more broadly. Absolutely. And this meeting is one of those places where the scientific community comes together and thinks about these things and tries to advance science in this way. So what about this annual meeting makes it so special, specifically regarding how it drives climate solutions? Yeah, so AGU, the annual meeting, right, there's a time-honored honored and important uh, element of complaining about the annual meeting, right? Like we all complain about the annual meeting. It's too big, it's overwhelming, it's unnavigable, right? There's too much. Um, and all of those things are true. And also it is the place that, it is the single largest regular gathering of earth and space scientists in the history of humanity. And so the energy that you get with that, like there's nothing like it. Uh, and I think it, it's really important. And it's a good time for us to focus on, yes, of course, get your poster done, do what you do, like navigate, like keep, keep your energy up. but all the energy that we consume, like personal energy and otherwise, in, in, in making this annual meeting, this, this hive of activity, I think yields orders of magnitude more energy that drive our community forward. And I think we don't want to forget that the earth and space sciences advancing understanding, um, making that understanding uh, relevant and actionable, uh, gaining a predictive understanding that we can then use to try to inform uh, societal decisions uh, for our planet and as we, as we look out uh, to the universe is, is really you know, just so wildly ambitious. All right? And it's really perhaps maybe, to me, I think it's one of the most inspiring and, and audacious things that we do as a species. And this is where we all come together to talk about it. And that just drives so much of what carries us all forward for the year to come. Wonderful. Thank you so much for sharing this insight with us. Thank you.